way we express the love of Jesus Christ and the passion that He had is that we go out there and we serve others. We go to the out-of-bound places, the ends of the earth. The world is changing, but the gospel doesn't change. The message of the cross doesn't change. We're going to make every effort to share the gospel. The world has been decimated by COVID-19, but the work here at Samaritan's Purse, it never stops. No greater need and no greater time than right now for us to go out and serve boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. During this pandemic, during all the fear that COVID-19 has brought to the world, this is when we go out and share the truth. This is an opportunity to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. God has told us to go into the world, uh, to make disciples of all the nations. That great commission is still in play today. We have a job to do. And missionary medicine is one of the great tools for evangelism. Is there a sense of urgency? Yes, there is. Get out there to be a part of this. Right now, it's the time. In Jesus' name, amen. So come, be a part of this. We need you. Hello, my name is Ken Isaacs, and I work with Samaritan's Purse, and today I'm speaking to you from Boone, North Carolina. And I want to deliver my warmest greeting to everyone participating in the Nurses Christian Fellowship International Virtual Congress. And it is a great honor for me to be able to address you today. I serve as the Vice President of Programs and Government Relations with Samaritan's Purse, and I have been doing international relief work for almost 35 years. I've had the opportunity to work in over 120 countries, and I've traveled to more than 150. Samaritan's Purse is a Christian evangelical organization that follows the role of the parable of the Good Samaritan. When a man was beaten, left in the ditch to die, and the religious people of the day walked around the man. But a Samaritan, a social outcast, came to the man, he saw him, he took pity on him, he went to him. The first thing that the Samaritan did was he bandaged his wounds, he bathed them in uh, oil and wine, he put the man on the donkey, he took him to the hotel, it's called an inn, but he took him to an inn, and he took care of him. And there the man would have received food, he would have received water, he would have received clothing. And the Samaritan left two coins and said, please take care of him to the innkeeper. And when I come back, I will pay you the difference. I see the parable of the Good Samaritan very much aligned with the role of nursing. Nurses are the people that go to folks in need. Nurses I have seen in the hardest places in the world. Nurses are the ones that hold their hands, wipe the sweat from their brow, take their temperature, clean their bedpans, make sure that their medicine is the right medicine. They feed them. They console family members. Nurses are the backbone of the healthcare system. The typical nurse ratio for patients in the United States could be five to eight patients per nurse. But when we are responding in a crisis, whether it's in Mosul, Iraq during the war, in Ecuador after an earthquake, sometimes those patient loads, particularly during COVID, when the work burden has been so enormous on the entire nursing staff of hospitals around the world, that load can get 10, 15, even 20 patients per nurse. I have seen nurses come out of wards and they are physically exhausted. They are emotionally depleted. They can hardly stand, and yet they don't want to quit. They want to go back in. So I know that over this past year during the pandemic, it has been an enormous burden. But nurses have made the difference. To me, nurses are the heroes of the front lines. Whether that front line was Ebola, whether it was COVID, whether it was trauma injury, whether it was any other kind of crisis that we respond to through our disaster response teams, I know that the work toll, the emotional toll, and even the spiritual toll on nurses is heavy. This kind of work has a horrible toll on the psyche, on the strength, on the spiritual resiliency of nurses. 
And I just want to encourage all of you, please try to find the time that you need to rest. Please take care of yourselves. Please take care of your coworkers. You need each other. Everyone that is walking through fire together tend to walk through it as a group. And when that is happening, I know from my own career in emergency response, it's the people that is immediately in my group, the people who are my coworkers, we draw encouragement from one another. People come and encourage me. They'll encourage me with a Bible verse. They'll encourage me with a prayer. They'll encourage me with, it might just be a two-minute hands-on here, I'm going to help you. One of the unique things about COVID, and you know it has very many similarities to Ebola, in that the patient is isolated and the healthcare staff that come in are wearing, let's say, spacesuits. There's really not the opportunity for easy connection with patients. So many times our staff have gathered around the bed and just whispered Jesus over the name, have prayed for the patient. We pray for the patients that are coming in, but we have seen also patients come to faith in Christ because I believe that the quality of our work is the platform of our witness. And when you're a nurse, when you're helping somebody uh, get through a severe sickness, when you're nursing them back to health, uh, to share your faith with them, to encourage them, to ask them, may I pray for you? I've never seen anybody say no to that. And their heart is in a tender place, and they're open to the gospel. And when you whisper Jesus' name, it is a powerful name, a name that goes beyond power as we can imagine it. There is power in God's word. Sharing the name of Jesus, sharing a Bible verse with a patient who may well be on their deathbed. They don't know what the next hours are going to hold. They don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. God gives you a unique opportunity and a platform to not only help in his name, but to share his name with your patients. And that is a very unique opportunity that you were blessed with by being a nurse. Samaritan's Purse has many programs around the world. And one of the things that we have put a lot of time and attention into developing over the last 20 years is our ability to respond during emergencies and health crisis all around the globe. You could see examples of that, whether it was in the earthquake in Ecuador, the war outside of Mosul, the COVID pandemic in New York or Cremona, Italy or California. There's many different areas that we have been involved in emergency medical response. And in my career and in my leadership role here, I can tell you that the key thing are the people that serve with us. And among those key people, the single most important role that we have is the role of nurses. Nurses are enormously valuable. We find in nurses the caring, practical skills, not only for patient care, but also the organizational ability to run the entire hospital. So as an example, in both Cremona, Italy during COVID-19, in Central Park during COVID-19 last year, we had a 70-bed hospital and a 68-bed hospital. It was in March and April. The whole world was learning about what COVID was. And the people that we mostly depended on to treat patients in those two facilities were nurses. It was nurses that were doing the backbreaking hard work, nurses that were holding their hands in the intensive care unit, and some of them didn't make it. Some of them did. It was nurses who turned the patients over. It was nurses who carried the heavy workload where they would have 10 and 12 patients per nurse. Doctors are valuable and they serve a role. And we won't make any jokes today about doctors, but all of you nurses that are listening will know what I'm talking about. It's nurses that we seek to recruit more than anyone else. So in your role as a nurse, you carry a lot of weight, you carry a lot of responsibility, and you have an enormous ministry. 
and an enormous ministry opportunity. My name is Brittany Atkinsola, and I'm one of our ICU critical care nurses here in Central Park. My name is Kristen Dirks, and I am in charge of the intensive care unit. I could have never guessed, even a month ago, that I would be here in Central Park doing this work in our emergency field hospital. It feels surreal. Sometimes I still feel like it's just uh, a movie. It doesn't feel like this is actually happening. I've visited the city many times. I've, I've visited right here in Central Park several times, but I've never seen the city in this way before. It's, it's more difficult because it's so close to home. Typically on my way to work here, um, I'm praying for what occurred in the night, if certain patients made it through the night. I'm also thinking of my family back home. Our patients in the ICU are very sick patients. I'm here to bring hope and love and joy to these patients as well. And so in those moments, those are the things that keep us going and keep us motivated to keep serving and to get up every single day and keep coming back. In the intensive care unit, whenever a patient is put into a deep sedation, we then take over for them. We are providing nutrition for them uh, through a feeding tube. For some patients, we also have to help their hearts beat well by giving them certain medications. Our role as the nurse is to step in and provide comfort when we can. So it's a heavy burden to bear, knowing that for some of these patients, when they are passing away, that we are the last people holding their hand, uh, singing over them. I think of my mom, if she were in the situation where she was needing care, I'd want someone to just love and be compassionate for her. I try and think of the things that I would want my family to have in their last and final moments, and that's what we try and do every day when we're in there. When we're working, there's always moments where I feel like God is just reminding us of how good He is. We'll have something very sad happening in the ICU, and then we'll hear that cowbell outside of our tent, and that means that someone's going home to reunite with their family, that they've been healed from this disease. Every single day, God has dropped little special moments right in front of us, I think, just to remind us and to keep us going. My hope is found in Christ, and the hope that I get to wake up another day. God talks about being close and near to the brokenhearted, and that He lifts us up in spirit. And I know that God hasn't left us, and that He's here. This experience has been, it's really been an honor to, to be here and to be a part of this. It's different than anything I've ever done before. And I've just seen healthcare workers unite in a way that I've never seen before through this tragedy. Um, but also it is for sure the strength of the Lord that, that is in us that keeps us going. And we know that He's called us to be here for such a time as this. I want to thank you for being a nurse. I want to thank you for answering God's call on your life to care for people, to feed them, to watch out after their medical condition, to hold their hands, to pray with them, to encourage family members, and to really pour your life out for the benefit of other people. And when I think of the nursing profession, when I think of the heroic, hard work that I've seen nurses all around the world do. I think of Matthew 25. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance and the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, 
Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. I have seen nursing in so many countries around the world. I've seen it in so many circumstances around the world. I have seen people give their lives to Jesus Christ because of the love that a nurse showed at a bedside, the compassion that was shown. Last year, I had COVID. I was in Azerbaijan when I got sick. And for 12 days, I was locked in a hotel room. This is a common story. You've heard it. But I had the opportunity to go to the hospital when I was brought out of Azerbaijan. And I will never forget the nurses that came in, even with full PPE, with a face shield, with a mask, with rubber gloves, with the apron on, but they touched me. And it meant a lot to me. It connected me back to humanity after an extended period in isolation. And I just salute all of you who are nurses and I want you to know what an extremely important role you play in the healthcare of the world. And it's not just in the recent days of COVID. If you look at the way that medicine is developing today in the developed world and the developing world, it's much more around a public health model. It's much more around how you can take the least amount of resources and expand it to do the most amount of good to keep people well. And when I think of our programs, when I think of the work that I see around the world, when I look at the uh, procedures that are being emplaced by the World Health Organization, it is very much around the public health registered nurse kind of model where the nurse is taking care of the health of people. So be encouraged. Thank you for what you do. I just also want to lastly say to you that if you would be interested to be a part of what Samaritan's Purse is doing, you could go to our website at samaritanspurse.org and look under opportunities. And down in that list somewhere, you'll find something called DART, D-A-R-T, and that stands for a Disaster Assistance Response Team. If you are in a position where you would like to go out on short-term assignments for two to four, six weeks, two months, and many of you probably have experience being traveling nurses. There's all kinds of schedule arrangements. Come to our website, see what we're doing with disaster assistance response teams, and see if there might be an opening or an opportunity that God would lead you to to come and join us in our work around the world where everything that Samaritan's Purse does, we help in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you to have no fear about going through any door that God opens. Whether it's in your home country or whether you sign up to serve in another country. I just want to encourage you that God knows your name, he knows your situation, and he knows you're patient. Let me pray a closing for us, please. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your grace and your mercy in our lives through your completed work on the cross. And I thank you for this wonderful meeting of nurses and this Congress that has been brought together. And I pray that you would work among the participants in a mighty way that your kingdom would be furthered and those that you are calling will feel it in their heart, that you will open doors for them, and that they will go through those doors. I pray that you will give these nurses strength, that this time, even though it's brief and even though it's virtual, that it will be a time of encouragement and restoration. I thank you, Lord, for their dedication to human beings, to caring for people, caring for people without regard for who they are or what their politics are or what they believe or what they don't believe, but they care for them because they know that each human being is a child of yours, your creation. They have a mighty calling and I pray that you will bless them and strengthen them in this calling and in responding to the calling. 
And I pray your blessings over this entire Congress in Jesus' name, the name above all names. Amen. Thank you. And it's been an honor speaking to you today.